Hey guys, Lucas here from First Instinct Krav Maga and Parabellum MMA. I got Rory McDonald here today, Parabellum MMA owner, no gi specialist, kind of ground wizard. Um, today we're bringing you a, you know, talk about self-defense and being on the ground. We're actually at a high school right now teaching self-defense, so we thought this would be a perfect time to kind of bring it to everyone and have our thoughts. Um, so I'm going to go first, you know, coming from a straight self-defense point of view, and then Rory's got a couple, you know, opinions that might differ from mine and a couple stories about being on the ground. So for me, guys, anytime I go to the ground, and it's not that I don't know how to go to the ground, I feel very uncomfortable. I feel trapped. It would be the same for me as having my back against the wall in a fight. I never want to be there. My options are limited. So anytime I go to the ground, guys, it's not about the arm bars and the leg locks. It's about getting to my feet where I have the most possibilities for exiting situations. The ground is very, very dangerous, um, especially when we talk about multiple attackers, weapons, and just having somebody big and strong on top of you. I've seen great guys on the ground get in trouble by somebody aggressive and bigger on top of them. Uh, you know, my opinion is never go there, and not that I limit it from my students, but I will avoid it at all costs. I'm always teaching to stand up defensively, be as mean as possible to get back to our feet. Okay, so we're going to give, you know, Mr. McDonald here, Rory, a chance to talk, see what he has to say about being on the ground in self-defense. Yeah, surprisingly, I don't actually disagree with uh, with Lucas. I've been in a, in a couple of street fights where where jiu-jitsu became a fundamental part of it, and I do think that it's important to have some ground acumen to understand what's happening, to how to, how to get back to your feet, how to protect yourself. Uh, but I would also never deliberately go to the ground, and there is nothing in combat sports that I'm better at than uh, than grappling. So I'll tell you two two stories that, that have happened to me uh, in my life. One kind of from a positive standpoint, and one from a little bit more uh, negative standpoint in terms of, uh, of ground fighting. First, I was, uh, I was working as a bouncer at a bar uh, in Mississauga, uh, and there was a knife fight situation. Uh, I didn't know there was a knife involved in the, in the fight until, uh, until afterwards, uh, but I, uh, I choked the, uh, the attacker unconscious, uh, shut him off, uh, and, uh, and dragged him uh, outside. Uh, the police, when they spoke to me afterwards, said I probably saved the life of the, the guy that he was attacking. Um, would I have handled that differently if, if I'd known that there was a, a knife in the situation? Maybe, but regardless, jiu-jitsu certainly worked very effectively uh, in that situation. On the other end of the spectrum, I was in a, uh, another uh, street altercation in a, in a bar in, in Moncton where one of my fighters, I was out coaching, one of my fighters uh, was attacked. Um, I saw him being attacked. I grabbed the guy that, that was on top of him and I started choking him as well uh, and we fell to the ground. Turns out that this guy was one of the bouncers at the bar, and when the other bouncer saw that I was choking this guy, they all ran over and they started kicking me in the head. And it was probably the most damage I've ever taken uh, in a street fight in my life. Being on the ground, as Lucas said, uh, traps you to a certain extent, and it limits your ability to, to extricate yourself from, from that situation. Now, on the same token, in that fight in Moncton where, where I was uh, taking that beating, it was jiu-jitsu that probably saved me from real damage. I was able to hip escape out from underneath these guys, and I was able to get back to my feet and then get out of that situation and, and, and re remain relatively uh, unscathed. So from a self-defense standpoint, I look at jiu-jitsu as a preventative tool as opposed to an offensive tool. You need to know what to do when that fight goes to the ground, but it's a good idea to drag some somebody down there? Absolutely not. I think, uh, I think Lucas and I are actually pretty close to, to being on the same page, uh, despite our, our disparate backgrounds. I like when I'm right, as you guys obviously know. <laughs> so um, I just have one I question. I wouldn't say he's right. But <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I have one question for Rory, and this is for all you guys out there training, whether or not you're an awesome Parabellum MMA student or not. What are the key elements, if you go to the ground in a street fight, that you need to know from a self-defense perspective? Is it bucking the hips? Is it shrimping? It's, that's, a, that's a very good question. I would say that there are, there are a couple of things that you need to know. First, being able to get off your back. Whether okay. you are stuck in, uh, somebody have, you have somebody in your guard, whether you're, you're mounted or whether you're bottom position side control, you need to have tools and strategies to get up from that ground position because it doesn't even need to be somebody that knows anything. It can just hold you down until their buddies come over and start hurting you. Yeah. Second thing, with the, the prevalence of, uh, of MMA and UFC uh, in the public eye, I think it is important to have an awareness of how to defend against simple submissions. Uh, the average person on the street 
does kind of know what a rear naked choke is. Yeah. They may even know what an arm bar looks like, and you don't want to end up in a situation where some dummy breaks your arm because you didn't have a basic idea uh, of, uh, of how to, uh, to escape from that. And finally, the mechanics of movement on the ground. As you said, hip bunking, uh, hip escapes, defensive stand-ups, things like that. Just the mechanics of staying safe and being able to engage in a, in a ground altercation without sacrificing position or your safety. Fully agree with all of those things, and you know what? I kind of expected that would be the answer. The only thing I would add to that, guys, is being dirty, okay? <laughs> Thumbs in the eyes, biting, you know, eye gouging. All those things kind of go back to it. But there you have it, guys. Roy McDonald, Lucas Chasten, Parabellum MMA, and First Instant Krav Maga. You guys have a lovely day.